there's plenty of videos on YouTube already that show the basic settings for astrophotography. This is where we're talking about shutter speed, aperture and ISO. But what I haven't really seen is anything that includes all this other stuff sitting in the back of our camera. What are the settings that matter? What are the ones that you can safely ignore? Well, that's what I'm going to cover for you today. Just go through each setting row by row, icon by icon, as well as a couple of settings that are hidden in your menus, which are really good to be conscious about. You might not have all of these in your camera, and if you're not in the Canon ecosystem, they might look a little different, they might have different names, but hopefully enough will resonate that you can work out if you've got it or not. And at the end of the video, I'm going to show you how you can save all of these settings into a custom function so that once you're out in the field, you don't have to remember what you need to set up. You'll just twist the dial into a custom setting and you're up and running, ready to go. Okay. So first thing, we need to be in manual mode. It might be obvious for the great majority of you, but just in case you're new to astrophotography, manual mode is the way we're going to go. So our first three settings across the top, funnily enough, are shutter speed, aperture and ISO. But listen up because there are still some gotchas here. So the first one is we want to be in seconds when we're shooting the stars. Now a lot of people will try to set their cameras to 10 seconds or 15 seconds, but what they actually do is only set it to say 1 15th of a second because there's 15, right? Or 1 10th of a second. This is way too short. All you're going to end up with is a, a black image. So we need to keep scrolling our shutter speed out until our little inches appears. The inches, uh, it means seconds. So now we're going to go out to 15 seconds. There we go. This is just as a starting point. Next one along is our aperture. Usually you're going to want this aperture as big as possible. So by that, it actually means we want a small F number. So hopefully your lens will go down to f2.8 or 3.5. Just set your aperture as wide as it'll go. f2.8 is a really good sweet spot if your lens will do it, or set it to 3.5 or even f4 if that's what you have to deal with. So the next one we're going to set is ISO. And there's a gotcha for ISO as well. So the first thing we're going to do is set it to 3200 ISO. So this is a starting point for your ISO. You'll just experiment to see whether it's too high or not enough for your camera. But what's the gotcha? So ISO is one of those global settings in your camera. So even though that we're in manual mode and we've gone to 3200, if we now go to say aperture priority mode, for example, you can see 3200 has followed us there. Maybe my camera is already set to that. Fine, let's check that out. Let's go down to 800 ISO. We're in aperture priority. Let's go back to manual. Look at that. We're also at ISO 800. Why is this a problem? So people will set their cameras up for astro, these really high ISOs, and then kind of forget that they're using that. And then the next day or the next week, you've gone out, you're in one of the priority modes, and suddenly all you've got is polar bears in the snow. Everything is overexposing. So just be mindful that your ISO is set really high if you're not using manual mode for your other photography. Okay, onto the second row. And our first one is our exposure meter bar. This is one of those things you can ignore. You're in manual mode, you're using very specific settings for astrophotography. You're not actually metering the light, you're not measuring how much light's up there because there isn't much at all. Uh, so this is not really gonna have any effect on your astro at all, you can ignore it. And next to the exposure meter bar is also the exposure flash compensation. Uh, straight up, you don't have to worry about. I'm pretty sure you're not going to be using your flash most of the time, although you can actually take some amazing photos uh, with flash. But for the purposes of this, I'm going to assume you're just doing straight up astro with landscape. You're not using flash. Ignore it. Nothing to do. The next one that's in my camera is the camera customization function. So this is the area which you can go into to reassign functionality for your buttons and dials to do different things. So if you've ever heard of back button focus, for example, this is an area where you'll go in to set it up. It too, don't have to worry about it for astrophotography. Okay. 
third row. So the first one for mine is the camera profiles. Now this is an it depends whether it's going to make a difference for your Astro or not. If you're shooting in RAW, this is not going to have any impact. If you're shooting in JPEG, it will. So what the camera profiles are, it's kind of a little bit of a pre-baked processing. So this is why it matters for JPEG. You can set it to things like, uh, you can see I'm in portrait now or landscape. Easiest way to really show it obviously is this is an area where you can set your camera to monochrome. So it's now shooting in black and white. If you're shooting in RAW, even though the images are showing as black and white in your camera, once you get it onto the computer, the full color image is there. But this is where JPEG matters. So if you have incorrectly set your camera's profile, it's now baked into that JPEG image. And in the case of monochrome, for example, there's no go backsies. It's now a permanently black and white image. So RAW doesn't matter. JPEG it does. What should you set it to, if anything? In my opinion, don't use the automatic because you will get some shifting profiles happening. Um, I prefer just to set it to neutral. This means camera neutral. It's not going to try and do any fancy processing. Next one along is our white balance. So this is another, it depends if it will affect your images or not. In RAW, we have complete override of white balance. In JPEG, less so. And especially if you've really got your white balance wrong in JPEG, it can be hard to color correct it. Now where setting your white balance is handy out in the field, even if you are a RAW shooter, is to set the white balance to how you would normally process your images. So for me, when I process my images, I, I like my astrophotography to be a little bit on the cooler side. So I'll typically set my white balance to a manual value. And for me, it's 3800, you can already see it's there. And that way, the preview that I'm gonna get in the back of the screen whilst I'm out at night doing these images, is just gonna give me a bit of an early heads up as to how the image is going to look later on when I get it onto the computer. Now, also, if you are shooting in RAW and you're doing star trails, so you're setting the camera up to take multiple exposures to say 30 seconds each for a few hours, definitely don't have it on auto white balance. Uh, it is fixable, but it is one of those things where you will get color shifts throughout the sequence of imaging. There's nothing really up there for the camera to measure a white point to do the white balance. So even in RAW, don't leave it on auto. My recommendation is just to set it to something fixed. Next to our white balance, you really don't need to worry about this one at all. Uh, this is where you can customize just some of the tints and the colors of your white balance. Ignore it, nothing to do here. Next one along, this is our lighting optimizer. In Canon, and I would assume in most other cameras, uh, when you're in manual or bulb, this is disabled. So it's not something you can turn on anyway. Ignore it, don't have to worry about it. All right, so what's the next one? Well, on my camera, it's the, uh, it's the wireless, wireless and Bluetooth. This you're going to want to turn off for one big reason. Typically when we're out doing our astro, uh, can be quite cold at night and maybe even freezing depending on where you are, cold eats batteries. The other thing that eats batteries is wireless and GPS. Like these things are really unnecessary to be running all the time. So for the sake of getting the most out of your battery life and not having your session cut short, just turn this off. Now in my Canon, uh, what we actually need to do is go into the menu and we want airplane mode or whatever the equivalent is in your camera. But once we've got airplane mode on, that wireless is now disabled, it's not going to be eating up our battery. The other setting uh, is your GPS. So down here in our GPS device settings, you just wanna make sure that it too is disabled. GPS is even worse than wireless, I believe. So definitely turn GPS off, uh, disable it if that's what you have available in your camera as well. If you've made it this far, I'm pretty confident you're finding this video useful. So I'd love it if you hit that like button. I'd really appreciate it. Helps the channel out a heap. And also, if you've got any questions or clarifications, throw them down into the comments. If you've seen my other videos, I'm always in the comments. I'll always respond with my thoughts on whatever it is that you're asking. We're on to the fourth and final row. 
So the first one is your autofocus zone, or in the case of my camera, it says autofocus method. So here's the thing, you won't often autofocus with astrophotography, although I've had a number of videos where I talk that uh, depending on your camera and lens, sometimes you can have success with autofocus. So what you don't want to be using is any form of zone. And the reason for this is as we have a look at it, so you can see that my camera is now, if it was going to try and autofocus, it's anywhere in this zone. But when we are getting focused, especially with manual, we usually want to zoom in and zoom in on a really bright star. So my recommendation, which will make life easier for you, is to actually go to spot focus. The great benefit to spot focus is now we have a little dot. So all you need to do, get your camera pointed to a bright star or a bright planet and get your little spot focus over that. And that means once you go to zoom in, in your live view to make the star look bigger, it's going to do it perfectly over where you have your spot focus sitting. So it's really useful for that. So the next one along is our focus mode. Is it going to be a single press focus or is it going to be continuously focusing? So in Canon, this is known as one shot or servo. In a nutshell, make it one shot. So we just want to set it to that one shot so it's not continuously trying to refocus if we are trying to use autofocus. Next one along, this is one that you can ignore. This is the metering function of the camera. When we're doing astro, we're setting the exposure manually. The way the camera meters, doesn't matter. You, you can ignore it, whatever it is, just leave it be. All right, second to last, the drive mode. Now, this one can have a little bit of an effect on how your camera operates. So we've got things like single shooting, high speed continuous, as well as our delay timers. So first off, if you don't have some form of uh, remote trigger, so I've got my trusty Harnell, I talk about this one probably every single video. Uh, if you don't have a remote trigger, you really want to set a delay timer so that your tripod and camera has a chance to settle down once you push the button. So depending on the tripod that you have, if you have carbon fiber nice and strong, use a two second delay. Or if you do have a thinner, lighter or an aluminium tripod, use the 10 second delay. Especially those, sorry to call them out, but really cheap tripods you get from the dollar stores. They barely do anything as far as stability. So you want to give it as long as possible to settle down. One of the other considerations is if you're going to be doing star trails. So for star trails, at the very least, you'll need your camera on continuous shooting. This means that once you've dialed in your 30 second exposures and you've locked your trigger open, every 30 seconds it's just going to automatically start a new photo. If you make the mistake of setting your camera to single shooting, and I've done it, It'll take that first photo and you'll hear the click click, but nothing else will happen because it's set up for single shot. So I'd even consider it that even if you're not doing star trials, at the very least, I just like to use continuous shooting because it's up my sleeve if I do go and start running a continuous sequence. And the last one, okay, so this is RAW versus JPEG. For astrophotography, you're going to get the best results when you're shooting RAW, but this also means you need to be processing the images to get the most out of them. If you're not somebody that's shooting RAW or processing your images already, then at the very least, what I would recommend is set your camera to shoot RAW plus JPEG. So all cameras will do this. You can see we're now set to RAW plus large JPEG here. This just means that down the track, if you're, if you're not processing your images now, but then you do later on, you've got those RAW files, which you can come back to and get the most out of the picture. We're almost done. There's two more settings that I just need to show you, which are typically hiding in your menu. And then I'm gonna show you how we can make this a custom setting saved into our camera. The first one is, now on mine already you see the little hand here, uh, this is image stabilization. So with more and more mirrorless cameras out there, there's more cameras that have in-body image stabilization or IBIS. So if your camera does have IBIS, turn it off. 
uh, you'll probably have to go into your menu in my Canon, we can see it here, image stabilization mode, options are on or off, mine was off already. The reason for this is most cameras won't actually detect if they're on a flat stable surface like a tripod. And what the image stabilization does is right when you start taking the photo, there's a floating element and, and in lenses it kind of floats around. When your camera is on a stable tripod and you've got this floating element wobbling away, it's not counteracting anything. So unless you know that your camera does detect a tripod, just go in and turn this off. So and also if your lens has image stabilization, vibration control, whatever acronym it is for your camera, turn it off in your lens as well. The other things that we want to turn off in the camera's menu are the long exposure noise reduction and the high ISO noise reduction. Now the reason why we want to turn these off is what can happen especially with a 15 second exposure or ISO 3200 is the camera will take your, your shot of 15 seconds and then it's going to feel like the camera is locked up. It's actually taking another shot of 15 seconds, but it's a dark frame, like it's actually black. The theory is it's supposed to help with noise reduction. When it comes to astrophotography, I just don't believe the weight is worth it. And I personally haven't seen a great improvement or really any change, to be honest myself. Uh, and noise reduction software these days has gotten so, so good. So these are settings that you wanna turn off in your camera. All right, we've gotten to the end. And if you're sitting there thinking that you're never going to remember which setting to use at what point and when, I've got a final, final trick for you. And this is saving all of this into a custom setting. In my Canon, it's under our little wrench icon there. And what you're looking for is custom shooting mode or anything talking about saving a custom setting. Mine, you can see here, it says C1 to C3. So my camera can save up to three. Your camera might only have one or maybe even two. It's just gonna depend. But you're going to go into the custom shooting mode and you're going to register the settings. I'll register my settings to C1. I'm gonna say, okay, has a little think about it. And what it's now done is everything that is on the back of my camera, as well as those other settings in the menus have now been saved to my custom one on the dial. What does that mean? So if I now go to my dial selector, we can see here I've got C1 and it's M because it's M for manual. And if I go into that, there's all of my settings. But are they really? So let's, let's actually find out. Let's go back to manual mode, okay? And I'm just going to mix it all up. So let's go to that 1 15th of a second. Let's make our aperture tiny. Let's put our ISO way down. I'm going to change my white balance to sunny, to daylight. I'm going to go to servo for my focusing mode. I'm going to change my uh, drive mode into that single shot. My profiles, I'm going to change to, what's, what do we got here, to portrait. Uh, so I've, I've totally gone and changed it, everything. There's all of those useless settings for manual. But now if I go to C1, where we saved it earlier, 15 seconds, F2.8, 3200. Our profile is fixed. Our white balance has been set back. We're in one shot. So it's all been saved into that C1 dial. So this is a really good use case for saving custom settings on your camera so you don't have to rethink and reconfigure each time you go back out into the field. Well, that's the end of it. Thanks for watching. Now get out there and shoot something amazing.